Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Chick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Chick. This is the wonderful outdoors. Carter Reed Exner is inside here, already set up. We just, oh, that's really blown out. We just started fishing and we're looking to catch some late evening walleyes. It's like 3.30 right now, so we've got a couple hours to try to put some walleye on the ice. But I've got a heavily requested video from a lot of people to do a Mega Live kind of review. My thought on it type of thing. I've had it for just over a year now, so I'm gonna give you the good, the bad, the ugly, what I have it on for a shuttle, a pole, all that stuff. We're gonna talk about the Mega Live and how I feel about it. Let's catch some walleye. Oh, oh yeah, coming in hot. Whoa, nice. That thing came in hot. Like it. Carter catches the first one tonight. It's okay, I'll let you catch the first one, Carter. It means more to you than it does to me. What is it, little walleye? Oh, an eater walleye. What a boy. That's a good fish for him. Oh, yep, and here she goes. Oh, there it is on the Mega Live. Poosh, all the way back down to the bottom. So right now we've got a little Cisco playing around with us and you can see that like a fish like this, it's 14, 15 inches. It's easy to see. We're in 29 feet right now. I've got a bait on that's 3 eighths. Carter's got one on that's 3 sixteenths. No problem marking our bait right now when it's a little bit deeper. When Mega Live first came out, I did notice that it was a little bit harder to mark your bait down deeper. But since they've done the updates, it's been good. Like I said in the intro, I've had Mega Live now for, well, just over a year. I got it at the end of November. And uh, I'd say it's gradually improved with the updates for sure. Not that it was bad when I first got it, it's just gotten drastically better. I'll roll a quick clip here when I first got the Mega Live. Keep in mind that I was recording with the GoPro on the screen compared to now how I'm actually using a screen capture device. But the first the first time I was using it, I ended up catching a 30 inch walleye for the first fish. So I'll roll that clip right here. That was really cool. I can see when I turn it. Oh, geez. Oh, it's coming to me. It's coming over here. Here it comes, come on. Oh, got him. That was cool. Wow, that was cool. I was spinning my Mega Live a little bit. This is a nice fish. If this is a walleye, it's a good one. I was spinning my Mega Live a little bit just to look shallower. I saw Mark cruising the bottom and all of a sudden I spun over to my bait and he started to come up. This is a decent fish. Man, that is so cool to watch on that screen. I think this is a walleye. It's a nice fish. <laughs> Put on a spoon right now. Went to the True Grit. Ooh. That's a good walleye, isn't it? I should have pulled the mega. Oh, that's a big walleye, Carter. Oh, get your, grab your bump board. Yeah, this is big. Are you kidding me? What? This is a toad. Holy cow. Um, Yeah, my first walleye of the ice fishing season is big. Like, big, big. Are you kidding me? Holy that's cow. That's a nice fish. That is a giant. Oh, come Barely on. Barely hooked. It's hardly hooked. Oh my goodness. It's a toad. It's a toad. Grab him. I will. Oh! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Look at that thing. That's a 30 incher Carter. Oh yeah. Like that is unreal. Are you kidding me? That was so cool to watch it come on the mega live like that. I am addicted already. This is a 30 incher. Nice job getting the board fast. Unbelievable. 30 and a quarter. 30 and a quarter inches. Holy. <laughs> um, well, that's a good start to the ice fishing season. 30 and a quarter. I never caught a 30 inch walleye all open water season. My first walleye of the open water season is a 30 and a quarter. Hello. <laughs> hardly out of the water too. Like hardly. That is epic. Unbelievable. Okay, I thought about moving a bit shallower, but no, I, I'm good where I am. I'm good in this 20 feet. So that was my first experience with it, with that fish. And I could tell like easily it was a bigger fish, right? When I was swinging it was with, with uh, forward mode, I was on at that point, not down imaging. I was swinging around with uh, forward mode and I could see a fish coming and it ended up catching it like at the last second when it kind of got in front of the, the imaging. So if it looks like it didn't come all the way into picture, it's because I was swinging the arm, kind of glancing around and looking a little bit. Now, most of the time when I'm set up, I fish in the downward mode for the, the imaging instead of the forward facing, just because it's a little bit better picture. I think if you were going to not be filming, 
having it in forward mode kind of looking around especially if you were going to be planning to moving somewhere else is always a good thing then you can see are they traveling 50 feet there 60 feet here right now where we're set up we can see out 25 feet out each side from the transducer so we can still see a pretty good chunk just not what you could if you were in forward facing what's this one coming in faster from the back oh right here Ooh. oh yeah Oh yeah, that's bigger. Come on. Nice. Got him. That's definitely nicer. You see all those Cisco's cruising around and then all of a sudden, are you kidding me? I know. He's right here. Look at this. I think I could get him again. That's a big fish. Oh, are you kidding me? Matt lost the 29 the other day, he said, same thing, popped off, dropped back down, caught it again. I look bigger. <sighs> that hurt. But it came out of nowhere too, like just yeah. off the bottom. He just, you can tell, he just hardly had it. I never like when you bite when they're getting up like that, like, because they just come up and ink. He's coming back. Yeah, he is. It's coming back. Come on. Get him. Maybe you can get him. Get him. He's obviously hungry. Get him. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I just lost a fish and a good one. And he came back and Carter hooked him. Come on. Be big. Be big. It's just, oh, it's nice. It's nice. That's a gooder. Not a great big one, but probably like a 20 six 27 something like that that was wicked wicked carter's decided he wants to land his own fish i'm gonna land mine oh no that's bigger than 26. you can grab him like that yeah awesome <laughs> he's got him that's a good one carter nice you bring him up show him off to the camera i'll get the bump board ready that's a big one though that a boy you caught my fish, Carter. That's like 28, probably. Show him off good. Not a boy. Nice fish. He's Carter, long. It's long. It could be even 29. That's bigger than I thought, yeah. No, no, 28 ish, right? Yeah. 27, three quarters. 27 and 27 and, and three quarters. Yeah. Awesome. Show him off one more and get him back. Oh, there's another mark down there. I'm going to drop down. You show them off and get them back. Nice fish. Well, I don't feel as bad for losing that fish now, Carter. <laughs> that was crazy. Came back and ate. Oh, when I, he must have hardly had it with me. Like, just like the bit. I never like when you're, you're going upwards with him. It's, it's so scary, but I brought that fish up probably a good 15 feet off of the bottom, lost it. It swam down slow and peeked around the bottom for a bit and all of a sudden did a 180 and Carter's like, it's coming back. And it came back and ate Carter's little dinner bell, a 3 16th, inch, 3 16th ounce dinner bell. Awesome. And we could tell like we've got, during that whole time there, we had, we had some Cisco swimming by and all of a sudden it was like, there was a bigger mark that just appeared and it appeared on us. So that means it's either traveling from behind us this way or this way coming at us. We know it's not going along the edge here because we would have we would have been able to see that fish coming from 25 feet away type of thing and working its way over. It's so cool you went like 25 feet that way and then just slowly came by. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Would have never known that it was the same fish you lost. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. With the, with 2D imaging, you would have had no, or with uh, with the normal flasher, we wouldn't have known. That, that was the same fish so live imaging definitely has its perks in that sense it's kind of cool that you can see that you can lose a fish and it will eat again it, it it can happen especially if they're hungry if they're in the feeding mood 
can definitely catch them again. So I've now played with the Mega Live in crazy shallow water, like five feet pike fishing. And it was really cool. You could really make out the whole detail of the fish, the pictorial fins, everything like that, right? You can plain as day see that they were pike. I fished with it as deep as 70 feet, I think, open water for lake trout. Had no problem with it at all with seeing the lake trout down there. You could you could tell the different sizes of the fish. I'll roll a couple of clips now of the, the lake trout stuff this summer. There's my jig all the way down. There's the fish. He's falling it down. Oh yeah, he's falling it down all the way. This is the one I want right here. I like this fish. Come on. Oh, come on. There's a couple decent ones here. Come on. Oh, look at this. Oh my goodness. There we go. That's one. I don't know if it's a big one or not. Yeah, I think it's a decent one. Yeah, that's a decent one. There was three of them there. You could. That's why I like these tube jigs with a single hook on them. You don't sting all the smaller ones. They don't hook, get hooked up. You don't have to mess with them, take them off. I can just kind of take off the smaller ones. I'm not even trying right now to set a hook on these. Let go of it. Okay, there, he let go of it. And here comes the other one here now. He's gonna get it, eat, eat it right off the bottom. I think he did. There he did, yeah, there we go. I think that one's a little bit better. That was a nice, I got, there was a smaller one that came in and I saw him eat it. And I just kind of let him let go of it. And as soon as he let go of it, this one came up. I don't think it's giant, but it's definitely decent. Just felt heavy as soon as I laid into it. That was awesome. I could tell it was a bigger mark. Perfect. And the Mega Live, I was able to, to basically shake the smaller one off. Oh, that was epic. Oh, that's the nice thing right there with live, live imaging. If I, if I just had 2D imaging, I wouldn't have known which mark had grabbed my bait. That was awesome. It's not a giant. I don't even care if he comes off right now. Look at that clear water. Oh, that is epic. Hope my hood's not covering my camera. No, we're good. It's a nice fish. That's a nice fish right there. Beautiful. I'm gonna shut my motor off so we have some nice quiet time with you, my friend. That's a big one right there. So cool. <laughs> Mega live for the win right there. I could net him already if I wanted to, but if he comes off, I'm not even too worried about it. I'm just letting him tire out a little bit. Beautiful fish. Beautiful. Live imaging, baby. You can pick apart the difference in the size of marks. That's a good fish. Big light green. Unless it's just my sunglasses, but that fish has a real cool green sh green shimmer to it right there okay 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 that's a big one actually it's a little bit bigger than i thought it's probably probably close to a 40 incher actually definitely bigger than i thought oh yeah yeah that's a good one right there yeah definitely bigger than i thought beautiful unreal yeah that's a big one actually that's a big one it's way bigger than i thought it's way bigger than I thought. It's a beautiful fish. Wow, definitely bigger than I thought. Oh, easy, easy, easy. There's lots of strength left, which is good. Lots of strength. Uh, 43 inches, baby. <laughs> 43 inch lake trout slob right there. Looking for a catch and cook video. Well, we're not cooking this puppy. This one is going back in. Wow. That's a beautiful 43 inch lake trout. Unreal, big fat head. Oh, 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 oh. so much strength left. So I would say after the, la the latest update, it got better in the deeper water. I played with it last winter, the Mega Live, and as soon as I got to 50 feet, I couldn't track my jig. I could see some fish down there, but I was, wasn't able to track my jig at all. Now, since the latest update, I have no problem in 70 feet fishing for lake trout, as you saw from that last, cl last clip. I'll do something with it this winter as well, probably at some point for Lakers, but that was the experience that I had during the summer with it for open water fishing. This is where live imaging really comes into play so nice. I can see all the bait fish. If you have a traditional flasher, you'll see stuff that's going through, but you don't know how big the bait fish are in that sense, right? Are they little bait fish? Are they big bait fish? This, you can like see all of the individual marks. Now, 
is it relevant to what we're doing right now in terms of fishing? Probably not, but it's just cool information in that sense. But I really enjoy the live imaging for that part. Like right now with Cisco, dropped out of the school, came down to Carter's Hook a little bit and having a peek. But you can definitely tell, you know, the individual marks. <laughs> Took a couple of swipes at you. Is it a little walleye? It must be a little walleye. Yeah. Hey. yeah. Little walleye. Oh yeah. You you stay out of the water with that one. I'll get the I'll get the big ones. I haven't caught a fish yet. Carter's out fishing me three oh oh. Carter's out fishing me three to nothing. But I'm about to make it three one right here. Well, the nighttime's coming in, and we're starting to get a little bit of action. These ones are smaller. Obviously, we're looking for bigger fish, but it is something for sure. If I hold it really close to the camera, I'd say it's as big as Carter's, maybe. I'll go through a couple of my settings for the for the Mega Live, but I will say it's really going to depend on the lake that you're fishing, how clear it is, your depth, all that stuff, right? But like right now, I have my sensitivity actually cranked. It's on 20. And then if I go into my contrast, I have it at 12 right now. I find that the clearer the water is, the higher you can crank your sensitivity up. If your water's not that clear, you turn your sensitivity down a little bit, and then you turn up your contrast a little bit higher, I believe how that works. You have to just kind of play with the settings though. Like there's no perfect setting I find in that sense where you can use the same thing all of the time. I don't know what this Mark's doing right here, if it's just a Cisco, but I got one kind of bouncing around me here. There's no like one perfect setting that's gonna work on every single body of water. You have to play with it. So a lot of times when people are like, well, what, what are your, what are your settings at? It's always, it's always going to be different. That's the hardest question to, to an answer, but you just have to play with it. The clearer the water, the higher you can put your, put your sensitivity up. If that helps. We're in 29 feet and we have no problems marking our jigs and stuff like that right now. And they're just little spoons. So obviously I don't know how a little spoon like that would work, would act in 50 feet. And maybe that's how I'll do a test with it sometime, but just play with your settings so you find the optimal. The other one I have on, I have the dynamic, uh, the dynamic, dynamic contrast. I have mine on high. So it's just this right now, it's a setting that worked for what's going on and I stick with it. So just play with it. That's really the answer for that one. Yeah, unless I think it's just two fish, maybe not. It's, I think it's just two Cisco's. Jeez, no, that's big. Wow, if this is a walleye, it's big, Carter. It's fighting like a walleye. I don't think it's a pike. I never got the best hook set on him. It's fighting like a walleye. That thing was up so high. That's a big walleye. Really, really, really big walleye, Carter. Really big walleye. Oh, I don't got a good hook set on him. Oh, I'm so nervous. Don't, don't, don't get caught on that ice. Don't get caught on that ice, please. Please. Oh, it's so, it came up so quick. It never got a good fight on him. Oh, I just feel like it's going to pop at any cell. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Carter, go on. <laughs> oh my goodness, Carter. It's an absolute giant. Giant walleye. Oh, it's that fat, Carter. Holy smokes. Oh, 31. 31. I've never seen a walleye that fat before. Oh, it's an, it's a giant, Carter. Holy cow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Carter? 13.5. You know what? 13.5, 13.60. You, know <laughs> you know what that means? That's, your That's a new PB. <laughs> I actually did it. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I don't weigh a lot of walleyes. The ones I think that might break a PB. Thir oh, 13.6 pounds. Unbelievable. Absolute giant. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was, that was the most nerve wracking I've ever been on a fight to. I did not like. The Are you kidding me? absolute sow it was about 
what, 10, 15 feet off the bottom, hey, 10 feet off the bottom? Yeah. Wow, 10 feet off the bottom, yeah. Unreal. Wow. Oh, it's gonna get there close. 13 pounders. 13.6, that's an actual PB. That's a new PB. I always get asked on my live chats, what's your PB walleye, what's your PB walleye? It's always been 32 and a half, which this is an inch and a half shorter, and 13.556. 13.56, this one is 13.6. 31. 31 inches. I just changed to a rattle bait. We've been fishing the, I probably think that fish when I got water on when he, at the end there. I just switched to a rattle bait and we saw Mark coming in. It was like, it could have been two Cisco's together. And then no, it just clearly, it was a one big Mark and hardly had it hooked. Like I, there I wouldn't are. have been surprised if I would have lost that fish at that point. I'm shaking right now, vibrating. Unbelievable. So yeah, that's wicked. It's the biggest wall I've ever seen. So that fish definitely happened. That was uh, pretty intense. After that fish, I don't even remember if we caught anything else to be honest with you. I didn't even fish that much anymore after that because it was like after that fish, it was just mind blowing, right? Like it's only so often you get to see a fish of that caliber. That's probably only like my seventh or eighth over 13 pounds ever lucky enough to get one back to back years now but i wanted to talk more about the whole mega live thing where it's come i never did talk about my shuttle the pole what i have it on in that sense how i power it so i thought i'd cover a little bit of that stuff in in the garage here as well as make a few announcements about the auger giveaway that we did and game of inches and that so anyways my shuttle sits on or my shuttle my apex which i i have an apex so i can screen record before in the past i used to do videos with a, a gopro and then uh hummingbird offered to get me an apex unit that i could record on just to clear up all of the um, imaging basically to make it crisper cleaner right no watermarks no glare that kind of stuff so you don't need something like this for to run mega live you can go with the regular helix it'll be just fine i ran that for a long time carter runs it it's perfect so i have this on what's called an arc lab 5200 shuttle it's aluminum it's built really really solid pick it up with one hand no problem had it now for it's been my second season i've i beat the crap out of this stuff and it works really really well on the back here it has a little uh cable management area there a ma cable management area a little uh, bracket that you can put on there super handy you can get different options for the front for the face plates in terms of power adapters all that you can rig it however you want i actually don't have a battery in the bottom of mine i went with something different i went with an external battery hook up here so i can hook up to many different power sources depending on what i'm going to be doing i've got on uh two clips here and then on say this battery right here i have the clips i just have to clip into and i can take those off i can put them on the bottom of say this power box something like that right here it's got hookups for it this is a dakota power uh power box 60 and then in here actually i got i'll go back to this but i'm getting squirreled like always in here i have uh an inverter and then in here, I can carry all of my uh, tools to screen record. Obviously a little bit overkill. You wouldn't need something that big to run this, but Dakota Lithium does have a 46 amp hour, which is amazing. Obviously that wouldn't fit into the shuttle. Carter runs his on a 23 amp hour battery from, Lith or from uh, Dakota. It fits in this Arc Lab shuttle perfectly. We have it all wired up so he can turn it on and off with a switch. That way your, uh, your mega live transducer or your live imaging transducer, whatever you're gonna run, doesn't kill your battery. So I have different powering options in that sense. So that's my shuttle, 5200 series from Arc Lab. Well built, comfortable to carry. The pole that I'm using is, again, Arc Lab pole. You'll notice it's nice and short, right? They've got poles that you can uh, add on to make them longer. So now when I get a little bit into the season, I can add a little bit more. When I get later into the season, I can go this. Or obviously, say if I'm in Lake Winnipeg and I really need a bunch of poles, I can add everything. 
I like how compact that is. It does have nice clips at the top here that I can clip my whole unit to right at the top. And I'll grab my other camera here and show it, but it just clips in and then I can have it all clipped in there right at the top, grab the pole and it's easy to go. Again, I've been using the Arc Lab stuff now for, like I said, this is my second season. Super happy with it. The pole's really durable. I can transfer the pole over into my boat to be able to use it for the summer as well. And then even the shuttles, he makes different kits and stuff like that as well that you can transfer in and out of your boat. So you don't ever have to like move your unit to your boat back to the shuttle you can get little clamps and lockdowns that are locked on your boat so now you can move it around so you want to fish to the front of the boat you want to fish to the back of the boat you want to go to a buddy's boat right you can really keep this compact with your power source and everything in there it's super handy in that sense where it's like always ready to go boat to boat you don't have to just have it locked down in your boat and go through the whole thing of having all of your uh, hard wire to your your main batteries and all that you can have a little uh com what's the word i'm looking for compatible Compact, a little compact. There's a word I'm looking for, brain farts, right? It's, I always film this as I go. I don't like ever write a script or anything. I just turn the camera on and start start talking, but super handy. Uh, what else to cover here with that? My live imaging thoughts in general. On I should say my mega live thoughts in general. When it first came out, it was okay. I was like, uh, I'm not sure, right? The whole... Uh, having your lure disappear in like 35, 40 feet of water was really discouraging. Their updates fixed that, kept me happy. What I tell people now is when they ask me about Mega Live, I'm not disappointed. If I was disappointed, I would jump ship and I would just, I would run something else. Does, is Live Scope the superior brand right now in that sense? I don't say the superior brand, but I think probably live, the live scope has maybe a one up edge right now on the mega on the mega live. But that being said, they're coming out with constant updates. I always say these companies are just like any electronic company. It's like, it's a jump ahead, it's a jump ahead, it's a jump ahead. Mega live does have the ability to be updated. There'll be more updates coming in the near future. I'm, I have a lot of hummingbird stuff in my boat. So it made the most sense for me to go that route. You know, the mapping works, the side imaging works for me, the down imaging, all that. It just made that much sense for me to go with the Mega Live route. I know there's gonna be all these comments. Mega Live sucks. Live scope so much better. I I don't I fished with them both. I, I don't really see it. And I watch the live scope videos on, on YouTube too, and I'm just like, well, that also looks like a red blob too. There's times where you're going to have great definition in both units. So to answer your qu the question straight out, I am not disappointed right now with the Mega Live at all. Was I disappointed when it first came out? Uh, not entirely, but uh, there were some things that was like, are you kidding me? Like this should, I can't believe I can't see my jig, but they fixed it. They listened, they fixed it. More updates coming obviously in the future, but I I'm going to call a spade a spade when it comes to that stuff, right? So yeah, that's, that's my thoughts. I am not unhappy with it at all. And I, I don't regret it if it sucked. I would just sell it and I'd go buy a, a live scope setup. I'm not, I'm not tied to any brand in that specific thing where I have to be running a hummingbird and that's it. Anyways, that's my thoughts on that. And now that you heard me rant for all that and you're here for the auger giveaway, I have a winner selected. There were 70 correct guesses for our total inches of 198.75. I closed the competition before the start of day four, uh, before the start of day four's video came out. I had the winner picked, everything like that, right? And it was funny. So there was 70 correct guesses. Now, if I go search, there's 80 correct guesses. So 10 people changed their answers or commented new. So those 10 people, don't worry, they're out of the competition. The people that entered correctly ahead of time, you guys are, are in it. There was 8,400 comments. That's insane. That is awesome. Thank you guys so much for participating in that giveaway. The, the winner selected right here, I'll put a screenshot. We did a comment selector and did a random draw. Kevin Kwanzi. I hope I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that name properly. I apologize if I butchered your last name, but you get a hold of me through Instagram, Facebook, something like that, uh, or even, uh, even reply to a, um, one. Why don't you comment below in this video uh, how I can get a hold of you? and we will touch base and Ion will send you a brand new auger of your choice, eight inch or 10 inch. And yeah, that's, I, I wish I could give everybody an auger. I know there's lots of people already asking in the comments. Uh, also, I still will get back to, or try to get back to everybody's comments on that video, but Adam and I both say thank you very much for all the love and the congratulations. 
Uh, we're headed to Fargo this weekend to do an, a little award seminary, a, a seminary, a seminary, Sem oh my goodness, Clayton, this is hilarious. Ceremony, ceremony. I'm, I'm really not this bad at English, but I will uh, not lie. Uh, I, I'm not going to lie. English has never been one of my strong suits for sure. I was always got made fun of when I was young about my spelling abilities and stuff in a, in a good way. So it's, it's, it's all comical. English is definitely not a strong suit. Hence why I fish. That's what I do. Anyways, Fargo this weekend, we will be there, like I said, for the awards ceremony and a little bit of a question and answer. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, my partner, Adam, won't be able to make it, but I'll be there. Adam Conrad, Joseph Cooper, Alex Perrick, and Josh McFadden. Who can forget Josh? He was hilarious. So thank you guys all for all the support through the whole game of inches. My time's at Fargo. I'll be at the Frostbite booth from, I think, 3 o'clock to 7.30 on Friday. I'll be at the Frostbite booth from uh, Saturday morning. I believe it's from 10 o'clock till 2 o'clock. I'll be at the Aquaview booth from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock. I'll be at the uh, Otter Outdoors booth from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. And then we have our Q&A. And then I'll also be in the Ion booth on Sunday morning from 10 o'clock till noon. So thank you, everybody, for watching this video. I know this last part was a little bit long-winded the links to the arc lab stuff will be below it's got so many cool different add-ons and additions you can get for the shuttle for your boat go through that that's where the wingman sh shuttle comes for or the wingman shelf comes from that you see in my hubs on that note too people are asking about why is the shuttle crooked on the otter shelters that have a wide bottom that flare out that's just the way the pole set up. It doesn't work so good as like for your drink holder. It does, your phone will sit in that little section in that little shelf cutout. It fits in there good. It doesn't slide out. It's a good plot for your rods, your pliers and that. So I'm going to work with Ian and his team on some different ideas for the wingman here going in the future. But that is a very handy tool. I've liked it so far in my shack. So thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget, get outside.